think we have a bombardment of information hitting us every single day, and this causes a lot of compassion fatigue. But I, I think we need new ways of approaching global issues that actually make us curious again and makes us ask questions, turn us into an active audience. My name is Elisa Yanacone and I'm a cinematographer with experience working in six continents. I've covered various kinds of humanitarian crisis, sometimes conflict zones, um, and I just very recently relocated to the UK. I wanted to be a filmmaker since I was 12 years old. I knew that uh, it was what I wanted. The only thing is that I thought I wanted to be a film director. And then once I actually got to be behind a camera and started to work with lighting and just how you could control color and texture and all of these things, I just fell in love with it and decided that that was where I really wanted to be. My work has encompassed covering domestic violence in Iraqi refugee camps, the devastation of Cyclone Idai in Mozambique, and uh, various kinds of pieces on sexual violence. I'm quite drawn to human rights stories and certainly pieces that raise awareness about a particular issue that perhaps is underreported. So Cyclone Idai was one of the worst cyclones that the Southern Hemisphere has seen uh, in history. And basically the city of Beira had lost 90% has, was destroyed 90%, so they'd lost electricity, they'd lost water, um, and so the idea was to go in and I was shooting a project for a couple outlets, and I just didn't really know exactly what I was gonna find. I try to find stories that are beyond the mere facts. Uh, I connected with a group of artists there uh, that had lost all of their musical instruments, and you know, didn't know exactly how to cope with what was going on and all the loss uh, that they'd experienced. For me, that story just felt so meaningful. I worked on a multimedia exhibition for the last six years called The Spiral of Containment, and this was addressing uh, the impact of sexual violence. So it was, it was working with a range of survivors and how it was that they were made to feel after the assault, and finding ways to express this through the realm of the imagination. So. One thing that I hate is when we re-victimize the victim, right? When we present someone that's already been through a lot in a very black and white, photojournalistic way. I think certainly when you tell a story in a way that's unexpected, you start to reframe people's views on it. And suddenly an audience that was once quite passive because they feel like they've seen that image many times becomes quite curious and they start asking questions that perhaps you know, otherwise they wouldn't have. So I, I do really like telling stories in a different way. I think as a solo shooter, you just want to make sure that the quality that you're getting in your image is great. Uh, and that you're not going to have to pay huge attention to any one department because you're basically juggling all of them. The expectation on the market now is that you're going to deliver higher quality, faster turnarounds, um, less people, especially now with COVID, we're seeing much smaller crews. So you need a technology to be an ally. You need that camera to actually support you and make your life easier in every way that you can, and also allow you to, to work comfortably as a solo shooter where you're not stressing about all the things that could potentially go wrong. You, you need a camera that's responsive and that basically becomes an extension of your body and it's just going to do exactly what you're hoping it will do and sometimes more. Having rugged equipment is really helpful because sometimes you're in a protest and you have to run, sometimes you have to climb a wall, sometimes you have to climb a tree and you know you don't have anyone to pass this stuff to you so you just need to be able to to ensure that if your camera gets hit accidentally by something, you're still gonna have a job. <laughs> um, and you need your kit to be portable as well. It's really important to have portable and lightweight cameras, because uh, when you're in those situations, every dead battery is weighing on you. So having kit you know, with long-lasting batteries and that's portable enough to keep you nimble is really, really paramount. I got a chance to go to Wales to compare the XA55 to the C70. I decided to go cliff camping uh, overnight in Wales and actually get a chance to test out these cameras from you know daylight into nighttime. 
And I also wanted to see, you know, how easy it was to get the cameras to respond when you're dangling from ropes and, you know, trying to balance and get focus and, you know, get image stabilization from a portal ledge. So I just really wanted to test them out in a, I suppose, a strained environment. I really enjoyed working with the XA55 when I was uh, shooting in Wales from a portal ledge. Uh, it's a camera that can give you 4K UHD all the way through from 25.5 mil to 282.5, and it really is good at tracking with the autofocus. It's dual pixel autofocus, and I got to track a high-speed boat which was going into the sunset where you have those highlights and you also have the darkness in the waves. So having that latitude is also really, really nice. Um, so overall, it's a really good camera, quite portable, and it's got XLR inputs, which are really great for, for audio. Unfortunately for me, people will forgive an image more than they will forgive audio. It shouldn't be the case, but it is. So having strong audio in your camera is really important. Sometimes a zoom lens is exactly what you want because you're in a quickly changing situation and for safety purposes sometimes you need to be at a vantage point and you need to just zoom in very very quickly uh, it's nice in the xa55 that you can also control the speed at which that zoom works so i don't necessarily like to have zoom inside my shot but i like it to just go all the way in as quickly as possible when i need it so having that incredible range i mean that's really wide to to very telephoto is is very very helpful in those kinds of conditions Going back to this dual pixel autofocus on the XA55, it was really wonderful to have that camera to shoot a Holocaust survivor in a room where I wasn't able to be operating the camera because of COVID. So, you know, the autofocus just had face priority. It locked into her and I actually never had a problem. Everything was in focus. I didn't even have to operate, which was terrifying. Um, but yeah, it worked perfectly. I really like that, you know, even though the C70 is a cinema camera, it's just so compact. A compact camera is very helpful because sometimes you need to hide it underneath a burqa. You don't want to call attention to yourself. Sometimes you need to pretend that you're a tourist and, you know, you don't want to show it to anyone. So small is good. Um, small, you know, form factor is, is really important in the sense that there will be quite sensitive environments as well. And sometimes it's not even just about your own safety, but it's about putting other people at ease. Sometimes when you come in with a big kit and you know lights and everything, people get intimidated. It's amazing how much is inside of that body. Uh, it's wonderful that it's compatible with RF lenses as well as EF lenses and that connectivity between lens and camera is faster, um, which gives you a greater image quality. I was shooting XF ABC uh, 422 10-bit, but you can shoot uh, other other you know kinds of codecs that are way less weight you know about half the weight of XF AVC which for post purposes depending on you know what your capacity is on the field if you need to edit something for example on your laptop uh, and you need to turn around very very quickly that's very helpful it's great that you can shoot also straight into PQ and HLG HLG being the BBC and NHK uh, format that's you know straight for delivery. So this saves you a ton of time in post in terms of color correcting if you're shooting on log or something like this. So it's just quite varied uh, and, and that's great because versatility is key. One of the things that I also really appreciated was the fact that I could shoot 120 frames per second still at 4K, at full cinema 4K, and I got a chance to track some mountain bikers that were coming around a bend. And it was a very quick reaction moment, you know, I didn't know this person was coming, and I'm like, oh my god! And that's the thing about the camera, it just auto-focused even in slow motion. I didn't even have to worry about that. And when I looked at the material and I was like, have we, have I got this, is it even, and I saw it, I was like, yes, great, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> Certainly when you are in a journalistic scenario and you're working sometimes inside of a person's house that doesn't have electricity, or you know, you're shooting after dark because you don't want to be seen, uh, you need a camera that's gonna be able to read into the shadows. So the more latitude you have, the better, and this camera did not disappoint.
So in this camera, you have the possibility of shooting C-Log 3, which gives you 14 stops, and C-Log 2, which gives you 16 stops of dynamic range. I chose more dynamic range, and I, I loved using that because when I was working in, in Wales, I did shoot well past sunset, and I wanted to make sure that I could still extract that detail from the rocks and the detail in the waves with basically just moonlight uh, and a fast lens. So the fact that I could do that really was excellent. What's really important when you're on the field is to be able to control lighting without having to A, put a big lighting setup um, or you know have to change lenses all the time. The ability that these cameras have is to switch NDs internally. And that is huge because you know one of the beautiful things of the C70 is that you don't have to, you know, build a whole map box and add all the you know handles, everything around it. Suddenly you have a small camera with a massive amount of things around it and it's not portable anymore, right? So the beauty of the C70 having internal NDs is that you know I can actually control my lighting situation. I can get a more beautiful shallow depth of field, have that bokeh effect, you know. I can control that just, you know, with a little knob, which is awesome. What I love about cinematography is that you you really start painting with light and you realize that if you don't have that darkness, you can't actually create images. You need both sides. And I think this is like a perfect example that applies to any situation in life. You'll go and tell a story and you will find darkness and you will find light. And I think that the ability to think in that way, both technically but also story-wise, is really beautiful.